Esther said, I'm the dietitian that covers the CF clinic. So today we're going to talk about some nutrition recommendations to kind of give you a better idea of how to better optimize the health of your CF children. So ideally, we would like to see you do three meals a day um, and as many snacks as possible, aiming for a minimum of two and up to four. You got to do the pancreatic enzymes and then do the nutritional vitamins also. And then the diet for that, pretty much they can eat whatever they want. Just try and focus on higher calorie, higher protein, and higher fat diets. And then depending on how much they're able to eat, we're going to maybe need to do some nutritional supplementation along the way. So well-balanced as much as possible. We want to try and make sure that we don't make picky eaters. So try and introduce different fruits and vegetables all the time. Come up with different ways to add additional calories to those things, you know, add extra butter to the vegetables. You can cook with bacon and those kind of things. And that's another way to help add calories to it. Um, when it's hot or if your kid is doing physical activity and sports, those kind of things, we're gonna also need to try and add more salt to help prevent dehydration and those stuff. And then obviously increase your fat soluble vitamins and calcium. So calorie needs is kind of a big thing. So this website, if you guys want to ever go look at it, what we kind of aim for is looking at what the USDA said are the average recommendations per age group. So what we do is I will look at those and then I will add at least a half to two I will double that number for the CF patients, and then that's the calorie amount that we are aiming for for them to meet in a day. Then for protein, I look at those as well, and then I do half to double again. And then for the fluid requirements, we're looking at 30 to 40 milliliters per how much they weigh. On, when you're trying to calculate also, you might want to look at how active your kid is, they might need a little bit more than that two per the recommended amount. Or if they're having a harder time breathing at that point, they might need a little bit more as well. The BMI goals is what we also try and focus on a lot is for infants and children, we want them to be above the, fifth, the 50th percentile. And then females need to have a BMI of 22 or greater. And then males, we want a BMI of 23 or greater. The reason we're trying to aim for these BMIs is because there's a better connection to increased lung function. So every time you go to the clinic, we are going to try and figure out a way to get you to these BMI ranges. So like I said, vitamins and minerals might be off a little bit because we have a harder time digesting fat and so that's part of why we take the pancreatic enzymes so the vitamins that we will be low in are going to be a d e and k and some minerals that we could have some issues with would be calcium iron sodium chloride and zinc so sources of vitamin a we're looking at pretty much any orange type fruit or vegetable out there is going to have a little bit more vitamin a in it Vitamin D, you're going to get that at any fortified milk product or try and get as much sunlight that you can. Vitamin E is going to be in some vegetable seed oils. And then vitamin K is going to be in your darker leafier greens. So mineral sources, obviously calcium is going to be found in dairy products. You can also get it in some vegetables and fruit. Iron is going to be in more of your meat products as well as... If you do iron that are plant sources, like it says the leafier greens, if you could add some vitamin C foods to it, which are going to be citricky, so like oranges and those kind of things, it'll help the iron be absorbed better. And then sodium chloride, pretty much anything that we have added salt in or processed or pickled is going to have more sodium chloride in it. And then for zinc, you're looking at beef, liver, whole grains. So I mentioned dehydration and the sodium chloride issues. Really, we want to make sure that we stay hydrated. And while you're outside or it's summertime, those kind of things, not just having a salty beverage will work. 
So you need to do some sort of drink and snack to help optimize the amount of salt that you take in to prevent being dehydrated, especially since dehydration can occur quickly. So we would want to make sure that if you're outside for an hour, maybe stopping at least a couple of times to get something to, to drink or as soon as you get done playing outside or doing a physical activity, try and figure out how to fit an additional snack in there so we can prevent dehydration. Nutritional supplements, there's a couple of programs out there that go along with your enzymes that you're already taking. So if you're on Creon, they have a program that you can get a ton of nutritional supplements and that way it can just at least save you a little bit more. And then ZenPep has the Live to Thrive and you can get the Scandi Shakes from them. And then Pertzi does Pancreatase. So if you are on Pancreatase, you can potentially join that program. The social worker or dietitian at the clinic that you're at can help give you these paperwork to help figure out if you guys can participate in these programs. But it, it's nice to at least have something on hand so if you're not feeling that well, you could at least have some nutritional supplements to go grab if your appetite's not exactly where it usually is for you. Then the next part is, are CF patients more likely to become diabetics? And that is a yes. That is partly due to the increase in mucus production that you guys have. And so it helps clog and plug the pancreas. And so because of that, it puts extra stress. And so then your insulin levels go higher and you can be more at risk for developing CFRD. So CFRD, we start testing at age 10 and we do an OGTT every year. Um, what we're looking for on the OGTT, there's a couple of different numbers. We have the intermittent and that's where we're looking at fasting and then the two hours after, and, but you're normal at the one hour mark. And then there's impaired fasting that you're just higher in the beginning. And then there's impaired glucose tolerance that at the two hour mark you are running higher. So those are my references. And then Krista will do more of the CFRD education. Is there any questions right now about increasing calories or the importance of nutrition? Yes. 